Mondays, everybody. Welcome back to part two of the journey with Jesus. This will be the last Bricked Live show for 2020 and a huge congratulation to our winners, boy and girl of the year. Well done, you deserve it. And to all the boys and girls, you're all winners. Thanks to all those who sponsored the event and a big thank you to all the parents and we look forward to serving you next year. God bless. Enjoy the journey with Jesus. Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. Oh my soul, praise Him for He is by health and salvation. All ye who hear now to his temple draw near, join ye in glad adoration. Praise to the Lord who are all things so wondrously reigneth. Shield the feet under his springs he so gently sustaineth. Hast thou not seen how thy desires have been granted in what he ordaineth? Praise to the Lord who, are, who doth prosper thy work and defend thee. Surely his goodness and mercy he daily attend thee. Ponder anew what the Almighty can do if with his love he befriend thee. Jesus' Family Life Jesus grew up in a bustling, growing family. He had several younger half-siblings children of Joseph and Mary, four brothers named James, Joseph, Simon and Judas, and at least two sisters. Jesus was the oldest of at least seven children. His stepfather, Joseph, was a carpenter. All traits Jesus would have observed during his childhood, Jesus himself was referred to as the carpenter. He was reared in a devoutly religious home. His family faithfully followed God's instructions concerning the annual religious festivals we know and the family made annual pilgrimages to Jerusalem for the Feast of Passover and Days of Unleavened Bread. Jesus as a child. Jesus' childhood home was in Nazareth a city of Galilee, where he grew and became strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. He experienced a natural maturing process similar to any growing boy, but he was especially endowed with God's spirit and favor from birth, so that he was far advanced beyond other young men when it came to grasping the word of God and spiritual principles. Jesus was no ordinary child, and at age 12, after keeping the feast of Passover with his family, Jesus was found talking with the most educated men in Israel. And all who heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers how is it that this young Jesus was so filled with wisdom and understanding?
The power behind the miracles of Jesus. The Apostle John wrote that Jesus, by the end of his short life, did so many remarkable things that if they were written one by one, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that would be written. Some of his miracles include Jesus turning water into wine, Jesus cast out an unclean spirit, Jesus healed the leper, Jesus stilled the storm, Jesus cured the paralytic, Jesus raised the ruler's daughter from the dead, Jesus cured a woman of an issue of blood, Jesus opened the eyes of two blind men, Jesus healed an invalid man at the pool called Bethsaida, Jesus fed at least 5,000 people, Jesus cleansed 10 lepers, Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, Jesus rose from the dead. Yet with all his astounding gifts, Jesus personally emphasised that he had no inherent ability to accomplish anything miraculous on its own. Jesus continually honoured and gave credit to his Father for all that he accomplished. He never stated that he alone could achieve what he did. <laughs> how Jesus was able to accomplish what he did. But what does this mean for us? Will any of us ever move mountains or ever have God's spirit without measures? Will we ever perform similar exploits as the apostles? Maybe, maybe not. But we are promised the same power through repentance and baptism. On the day of Pentecost, the apostle Peter explained what an individual needed to do in order to have the help from God that we all need. In Acts 2.38, Peter said, Repent and let every one of you be baptised in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift 
of the Holy Spirit. This is the power which Jesus referred to when he spoke to his disciples just before the ascension to heaven. He told them, Behold, I send you the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endured with the power from on high. Luke 24-49 receiving this Holy Spirit. If we want to have an understanding of God's plan for us individually, if we want to have the help that results in a changed life, then we need the same spirit that worked in Jesus Christ of Nazareth nearly 2,000 years ago. It is the power of God that gives a person a type of peace of mind, courage, faith and hope that can be found nowhere else. This power is available and is presently working in the lives of thousands of boys and girls like you and me. Peace. 
Jesus came with the message of peace, forgiveness and love, with the promise of eternal life for those who turn to him. He broke no law, committed no crime and sanctioned no rebellion. However, he was considered a threat by those religious leaders who wanted to maintain their position in society. He was obedient to the ways of God, his father, to the point of death. As a result of the message, he was sent by his father to teach. He was hated, accused of shameful deeds, betrayed by a close associate, arrested illegally, tried and condemned to die. Jesus was hated by his enemies that they used the most horrible method of death they had at their disposal to try to eliminate him. But he endured the shame of the cross. He bore our sins on his own body so we might be able to enter eternal life. And three days later, he was resurrected, triumphant over death. of Jesus so extraordinary horrible was that all of the people who have walked on the earth he alone was not guilty of clean right acts or sins of any kind Jesus the Christ Jesus Christ died because of sin not his own Jesus the Messiah was not sentenced to die for any crime against the authorities nor for any sins he committed as he died Every sin that had ever been committed was thrust upon him. Every lie, every act of theft, every murder and every other sin that anyone ever committed bore down on him as he was nailed to the beam of crucifixion. And our Saviour was willing to offer himself as a sacrifice for your sins and mine because of the great love that he and our Heavenly Father have for us. John three sixteen, or 
first of Diva sixteen. We can we can be very thankful that Jesus was willing to die. Without the crucifixion of Jesus, all of us would still be convicted sinners and at enmity with God and without any hope for the future. We should be sorrowful and thankful that it motivates us to repent, to change and commit to living a life that is pleasing to God and Jesus Christ. The Crucifixion of Christ by Mac Gonagall. Then Pilate, the Roman governor, took Jesus and scourged him, and the soldiers plaited a crown of thorns and thought it no sin to put it on his head while meekly Jesus stands. They put on him a purple robe and smote him with their hands. Then Pilate went forth again and said unto them, Behold, I bring forth to you that I cannot him condemn, and I would have you to remember, I find them fault in him, and they treat him too harshly, it would be a sin. But the rabble cried, Hail, King of the Jews, and crucify him. But Pilate said unto them, I find in him no sin. Then Jesus came forth, looking dejected and wan. And Pilate said unto them, Behold the man. Then the Jews cried out, by our Lord, he ought to die, because he made himself the Son of God, the Most High. And when Pilate heard that thing the Jews had made, he saw they were dissatisfied, and he was the more afraid. And to reach Jesus, Pilate did really intend, but the Jews cried angrily, Pilate, thou art not Caesar's friend. Remember, if thou let this vile imposter go, only goes to prove thou art Caesar's foe. When Pilate heard that, he felt very erect, and he brought Jesus forth and sat down in the judgment seat, in a place that is called the pavement, while the blessed Saviour stood calm and content. The presence of his enemies did not seem a poor when Pilate asked of him before them all, Whence art thou dost save from on high? But Jesus, the Lamb of God, made no reply. Then saith Pilate unto him, Speakest thou not unto me? Remember, I have the power to crucify thee. But Jesus answered, Thou hast no power at all against me, except from above it were given to thee. Then Pilate to the Jews loudly cried, Take him away to be crucified. And the soldiers took Jesus and led him away, and he bearing his cross without dismay. And they led him to a place called Golgotha, but the Saviour met his fate without any awe, and there crucified him with two others, one on either side, and Jesus in the midst, whilst the Jews did him deride. Then Pilate tried to pacify the Jews, they felt so morose, and he wrote a title, then put it on the cross. And the title he wrote, Did the Jews Amuse? The writing was, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. This title read many of the Jews without any pity, and the place where Jesus was crucified was nigh to the city. And the title was written in Hebrew and Greek and Latin. And while reading the title, the Jews did laugh and grin. While on the cross the sun refused to shine, and there was total darkness for a long time. The reason was God wanted to hide his ones from view, and he kept the blessed sun from breaking through. And to quench his first they gave him vinegar and hyssop, while the blood from his wounded brow copiously did drop. And he drank of it willingly, then bowed his head. And in a few minutes the dead saviour was dead. Then Joseph of Armithia sadly did grieve, and he asked Pilate if he would give him leave to take the body of Jesus away, and Pilate told him to remove it without delay. Then Joseph took the body of Jesus away, and wound it in linen, which was the Jewish custom of that day, and embalmed his body with spices sweet, then laid it in a new sepulchre, as Joseph thought me. But death could not hold him in the grave, because he died for sinners' souls to save. And God the Father took him to heaven on high, and those who believe in Jesus shall never die. Oh, think of the precious blood our dear Saviour did lost, 
that flowed from his wounds while on the cross, especially the wound in his side made with a spear. And if you're a believer, you will drop a silent tear. And if you're not a believer, try and believe. And don't let the devil any longer you see. Because the precious blood that Jesus shed will free you from all sin. Therefore, believe in the Saviour and heaven you shall enter in. Now what? Just like Christmas, once a year, like clockwork, churches and people around the world celebrate Easter, marking his death. They sing, he is risen, he is risen, he is risen. Just like a broken record. Yes, he is, but now what? He was alive. He had died for a reason, and he rose for a reason. Christ died to pay the penalty for our sins. But now what? Where do we go from here, and what do we need to be doing? A new way to walk. Yes, Christ is risen, but that's only half the story. The other half is that we must rise too. Christ died for our sins, not so that we could continue in those sins, but so that we could be free of those sins and leave behind the lifestyles that produce them. And once we make that commitment, just as Christ was raised from, from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so also, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Jehovah Jireh. My provider's grace is sufficient for me, for me, for me. Ho, ho, a gyra. My provider's grace is sufficient for me. My Lord. My Lord. My Lord shall supply all my needs. According to his riches and glory. He will be his angels charge over me. Jehovah Jireh cares for me, for me, for me. Jehovah Jireh cares for me, for me, for me. Jehovah Jireh cares for me. My Lord, my Lord, my Lord, shall supply all my needs according to His riches and glory. Kiss for me, for me, for me, Jehovah Jireh, kiss for me, for me, for me, Jehovah Jireh, kiss for me. Only the beginning, as followers of God, we must walk in newness of life. We are reminded that if we have been united together in the light, in the likeness of His birth, death, and resurrection, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of His resurrection. A future resurrection where God's called, chosen and faithful are given new life and welcomed into his family. A resurrection made possible by Christ's own triumph over the grave. God of heaven and earth, you are amazing. You hold me up with your hands, you give me faith and I will put my hope in you alone, in you alone. God of heaven and earth, you are amazing. You hold me up with your hand, you give me faith and I will put my hope in you alone, in you alone. I will put my hand in you alone and everything I need. My hope is in you alone, in you alone. I will put my hope in you, Lord. You alone and everything I need. My hope is in you alone, in you alone. God of heaven and earth, you are amazing. You hold me 
up if you hunt, you give me faith and I will put my hope in you alone, in you alone. It's not an easy journey. We're going to make mistakes. We're going to come up short more often than we'd like. We're going to miss a, we're going to miss the target and find ourselves in need of the cleansing blood of sacrifice of Christ's sacrifice again and again. But despite all the difficulties, despite all the problems standing between us and our goal, this is a journey that ends with hope. Hebrews encourage us to run with endurance, the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and our finisher of our faith, who for the joy was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Hebrews 12, verse 1 to 2.
troubles come and my heart will end me. But I am still and waiting in the silence until you come and sit a while with me. You raise me strong when I'm on your shoulders. You raise me up to more than I can be. Jesus came as a baby born in a manger in Bethlehem, died on an old rugged cross, but he is risen. More than that, he now sits at the right hand of the very throne of God, serving as a high priest who was in all tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. We have a high priest who not only intimately understands the difficulty of our journey, but who lived and died so that we could su succeed. That, that same high priest, Jesus Christ, the very Son of God, now exists as the firstborn among many brethren. Romans 8 verse 29, a beacon of hope encouragement and strength for all those who seek to enter the family of God. Amen. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of this comfort, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night.
He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. And green for and root in his seed is. His leaf also shall so not ever, but whatever he does shall put butter on good year, not so as like he shall fish the wind drives away. Therefore, the God shall not stand in the judgment, the sinners in the congregation of the watchers. For the Lord knows the way of the watchers, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Should the shadows come? Why should my heart feel lonely and long forever now? When Jesus is my portion.
I want to take this opportunity to thank all the children who have participated and shared their talents with us throughout the year. We know that uh, we will be missing you, but it won't be for long. We'll be back next year. Thanks to all the adults who have supported us throughout the year. Thank you for your prayers, your words of encouragement, your support, allowing your children to share with us and all the participation that we have had from adults throughout our program. On behalf of Bricks Kids and the Bricks Kids team, I just want to wish you all a happy holidays, Merry Christmas, and look forward to even a better and brighter 2021 Bricks Kids year. And have a love and nature sing.